the way you have it. As I open my mouth, fill it. Use this vessel as you see fit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. About a week and a half ago, Lord gave me a word for this, this time. And it, 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 it's always prophetic. And it can go many different ways, but most times it's prophetic from these lips. And the title God gave me said, tell them. Recover all while you wait for me. Recover all while you wait for me or for, you, for him, Jesus. Recover all. He's given you the time now to recover all. Take back what the enemy has stolen from you. Let him come find you recovering things. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's time to recover all. Everything. Start, tell the enemy, I am here right now to recover all. I am here to recover all. Hey, everything you've taken from me. Everything you've taken from me, I'm here. Everything you, you, you didn't just take it, you stole it. Everything you stole yeah? from me. I'm He's a thief, right? Ha, 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 ha. He's a thief and he's stolen things from you and I. Hallelujah. And he's, he's withheld things from you and I. But Spirit of God is saying, under this umbrella of Pentecost, you will now begin to recover all. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 30. Actually, before, before I go to 1 Samuel chapter 30, let me... Um, Let me give you a little story. Kind of like a little joke, you know? It's titled Persistence. God wants us to be persistent. Eh? A group of seminary students gathered in the chapel one day as, they, as the dean challenged them to not pray for a large church because of the stress problems and worries that go with it. Pastor Paul, you know what that, that's all about, right? <laughs> the next year, one of the students who graduated returned to give his testimony. He said, I did ask God for a big church. However, I also asked God for a pretty wife. My prayer was almost answered. Instead of getting a big church and a pretty wife, I got a pretty church and a big wife. <laughs> Be careful what you're asking for. And it's not wrong to, to ask God for the desires of your heart, but who knows best the desires of your heart? Hmm? God does. As I was gathering my sermon, I couldn't help thinking about a, a story of a little girl who was home alone and ill. She called her mother at work and told her, Mama, I need you, and I need you really bad. This mother asked to get off work and frantically rushed down the, the corner drugstore to bring home some medicine for her daughter. She noticed that as, as it was beginning to rain that she thought she would just run in and out to get the medicine for her sick little girl. When she came back to her car, she noticed something was not right. Something was different. You guessed it. She had locked her keys in the car. She ran inside to get help from, from the employees, but none of them seemed to know what to do and finally gave her a clothes hanger and said, good luck. She ran back to her car frantically. She ran back to her car, frantically trying to get the door open. The more she tried, the harder it rained, and suddenly it came down pouring. You know what it's like when you're out there and it just pours. And she looked up and she said, Lord, I need your help. And I need your help right now. Suddenly an old pickup 
truck pulled right next to her. And she looked up and saw this man approaching her. He was dirty. Had a, a dew rag on top of his head with scars and tattoos all over his body. One in which you wouldn't want to come across. Especially when you're alone. Without thinking, she embraced this man and said, Sir, could you possibly help me? My daughter is sick at home. And I have to get this medicine to her as soon as possible. And I have left my keys in the car. Within a minute or two, this man successfully unlocked her car. Out of joy, she grabbed this man, giving him a huge hug. And said, you're such a nice man. The man pushed her away and said, no ma'am, I am not. You see, I have just escaped from prison. <laughs> And I steal cars for a living. <laughs> Without hesitation, this woman looked up towards heaven and said, Oh God, thank you for sending a professional. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank God. You can recover. You can recover. I hear the Spirit of God saying to every one of us today and those of you online, you can recover Amen. while you're waiting. Stop sitting and waiting and wondering when, he, when he's going to come. In the, process of, in, in the process of wondering when he's going to come, begin to recover. Let him find you recovering. Amen. Become persistent. Hallelujah. Get rid of the, oh, oh no, 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 Lord, I can't do it. It's, it's not working. It's going to work. You're under that umbrella of God that's saying it's going to work. It will work. It must work. It has to work. Amen. Praise God. You hear pastor says all the time, it's not three strikes and you're out. You're back till you win. Amen. Praise God. You keep batting till you, you what? You win. Hallelujah. Because you see, you, you, the enemy has stolen from you and I. He has taken your stuff. And you need to recover it. Praise God. Or in the process of recovering it. You can't be sitting back anymore with your hands folded and saying, no, 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 no. The enemy has stolen your joy. He has stolen your peace. He's taken away your tongues from you. Hallelujah. You can't even speak in tongues the way you're supposed to. You can't even lift your hands the way you're supposed to. The enemy is a thief. You've got to recognize he's a thief. Hallelujah. And you've got to begin to reclaim what he's taken from you. He's tied up many things. He's wrapped up many things. He's put them aside and you need to take it back. Hallelujah. You need to get into the stronghold of the enemy, wherever his stronghold is, and say, Satan, I want what, what belongs to me. I want it back. Hallelujah. I'm calling names, you thief. Uh, nobody likes to be called a thief, even if, even if you're a thief. You know that, eh? God says it's time to recover. Hallelujah. 1 Samuel chapter 30. Praise the name of Jesus. And it came to pass when David and his men, verse 1, were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captive. So the enemies of, of, King, of David Stole from him. Has Satan stolen things from you? Has he withheld things from you? Is it lost, locked up and you can't get it? Nothing worse than Satan stolen from you. You want to get it and you can't get it. Hallelujah. And you're seeing it over there locked up. It's so close to you but you can't touch it. It's yours. But you can't touch it. It belongs to you, but you can't touch it. For the enemy has it locked up. Verse 2, and, and had taken the women captives that, that were therein. So, so they took David's wives. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So they, 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 they took David's things, everything that belonged to him. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire. And their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. The enemy taken captive by Satan. Using humans. Hmm? Then David and the, 
and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And that's what we do. When we seem to can't put our hands on what rightfully belongs to us, we cry. We weep. We get angry. We get upset. And, and the, the devil, Sufut, is sitting in a corner and he's laughing at you. He's laughing at, 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 at the, the emotions. He's laughing at, at the way, your behavior. And you're shedding tears. Oh God, oh me, oh my. What am I going to do? I need my thing so badly and I can't get it, Lord. I, I, I suppose, I, I, I suppose really, you know what some of us say? I suppose it, it's, it's not your will. That's how we ended up. I, I, be, I believe it's not your will, Lord. Because if it was your will, it would have worked out. Ah. But verse, verse 4 says, 5 says, And David's two wives were taken captives at Ahinohom, the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed. And that's how we are. Many of us, for the people spake of stone in him. Not, not only were, they, were the thieves, not only did the thieves take his family and everything else, but they wanted to stone him too. Because of the soul of all the people, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. His own people wanted to stone him. You're in the mud. Things have been taken from you. You're going through great distress because of your loss. And you've got some friends around you that you think you could count on as friends. Mind you, they've lost some stuff too. Things were stolen from them too. And what did they do? They wanted to stone him. Because grief was upon them too. And you got those friends around you who instead of comforting you like Job's friends, the oh, old Bible says miserable comforters they all are. Mm. They give you no comfort. They turn it around on you and they say it's your fault. It's your fault. It's because of you. My hurt is so bad that I, I, I think I'm going to just stone you. I think I'm just going to, I, I just, I, I just want to move myself away from you because my, my loss is so great. Not looking at the other person and say, you know what, you lost it too. Let's put our minds together and see how we can recover. Hmm? Verse 7, And David said to Abiathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abiathar brought thither the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, this is your solution, shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? Two questions. Lord, shall I, shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him. What did he say? Pursue. What is God saying today at Pentecost? Pursue. Yes. Amen. Go after it. Amen. Go after it. Amen. 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 Glory. For thou shalt surely. This is the word of the Lord to you today. You shall surely overtake them. Amen. They can't tell you no. If one says no, the other will say yes. But what we do, we stop at the first no and we give up. So we say surely God is not in it. But the word of the Lord said, and he answered him, verse 8, Pursue, this 
is God speaking, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail, without what? Without fail, recover all. Amen. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, praise God. That's the word. Amen. Without fail, you recover all. Amen. Hallelujah. There is light in the darkness. Amen. There is hope in the wilderness. It's not three strikes and you're out. You're back till you win. Praise God. Hallelujah. You are a go-getter. You're not a failure. Praise God. Praise God. So the enemy is trying to confuse you. Recognize that he's a part of his resume. He doesn't know any better, but you know better. You're a child of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Bible says in verse 9, so David went upon the word that he got, pursue, and you will recover all. Amen. Under this umbrella, hear the Spirit of God saying to you right now, if you pursue, you will recover. Amen. If you pursue, you will recover. Hallelujah. If you pursue under this anointing, under this word right now, you will recover and you will recover quickly. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So David went, he and the 600 men that were with him, and came to the brook Besor, where those that were left behind stayed. But David pursued, but David pursued. Oh, David pursued. <laughs> Hallelujah. So one raven down the road said, no. I'm not going to give you this loan. Remember the ravens fed Elijah. The raven down the road, next to the one next door, said, no. You approach the raven, he said, no. You give up. What about the, the, the you, you went to the raven on the left, what about the raven on the right? What about the raven before you? What about the raven behind you? Somebody is going to open the door for you, but you've got to pursue. Hallelujah. You've got to pursue. But David pursued. He had 400 men for 200 abode behind, which were so faint that they could not, not go over the brook. So you see, when you're faint, you can't, you can't recover. They were too weak with grief. Their emotions were low. They couldn't go forward with David. Hallelujah. They couldn't keep up with him when God said pursue. When God says pursue, there's an anointing, hallelujah, that he would place upon your life to pursue. Yes. Amen. Amen. If God tells you to pursue, there's an anointing to do that. Yep. Amen. The enemy has perhaps stolen your, your marriage, you've stolen your tongue, stolen your finances. The enemy trying to steal your health. The enemy has held back from you the desires of your heart. Some want to get married and can't get married. Have you ever considered sometimes you may have gotten a proposal and you said no? You may have gotten a proposal one time, God brought it, to, brought it before you said no. God is still waiting for you to say yes. So I say, Lord, I missed it. I missed it and I repent. But you're still in that process of, of when you pray, when you recognize your, your wrongs, you, when you recognize that, that, yeah, God was really speaking to me. He said, God, forgive me, forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. He'll turn it around. We are, you and I are in that path right now where we need to pursue and recover everything. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Persistence after God pays big dividends. Mm -hmm. What does the psalmist say in, in, in Psalm 42 verse 1? As the deer panted after the what? Oh, Jesus. So my soul longeth after thee. Persistence means to be firm or obstinate. Continuance in a course of action, no matter what comes your way. That's what persistence is. <laughs> Praise, the 
Praise God, I love it. In spite of the difficulty, in spite of the hardships, in spite of the, the mountains before you, you're going to persist. Amen. Amen. You're going to push. Amen. Praise God. Amen. The victory is there for you, saints. Amen. The victory is there for you. God is saying today, under this umbrella of Pentecost 2022, you will have the victory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I know there's a turnaround coming for, for many of you that are in this place today. Amen. Hallelujah. A turnaround that God has showed me. Those of you that are online right now, a turnaround. If you're persistent, the enemy will crumble. He'll be like paper. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Crumbled paper yes. before you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Your situation will not continue. Hallelujah. If you take heed to what the Spirit of God is saying to you right now, your situation that you're in, the tying up, the bondages, it cannot continue and will not continue. Yes. But you've got, you and I have to take action. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I, I know years ago, when we first started out in this ministry, a young woman, I think Pastor Paul mentioned it before, wanted a husband and she pers he pursued her, but she said no. Fellow from out of town pursued her and she said no. Maybe months, months passed when her eyes were opened up. When the eyes opened up, it was too late. When she contacted the fellow, he said, if you had only, if you had only talked to me or called me a few months prior, I would have said yes. But someone pursued, someone else pursued me. And I took heed and I responded yes to that individual. They're married today. They're married today. Young lady went on after years, uh, eight years I spent in prayer with this individual. Eight years, every holiday, I would be in my closet, literally in my closet, asking God for a spouse for this young woman. I would pray consistently, consistently. One day in my closet, the Lord said to me, and Pastor Paul, we both were. He said to us, he said, she never repented. She never recognized that I was the one that made the first move. And with that, we went to the individual and we spoke to the individual and we said, this is what the Lord says. She said, that's true, I never repented. Right there and then she knelt down and she prayed, she cried in tears, God, please forgive me. Forgive me. I didn't understand back then and it wasn't what it looked like what you said to me. My heart wasn't in it. You see, you don't follow your heart, you follow God. Mm -hmm. mm, God. My heart wasn't in it. it. The package didn't look good. Mm. So I rejected the package. I rejected it, Lord. Forgive me with tears. And you know how I know God answered that prayer. At the end of the prayer, she said, God, give me another chance. It's not three strikes on your out, saints. Give me another chance. Uh, this time, uh, I, I, I don't want to miss it. This time, bring him to my door. 
She was determined about three months later, God brought the man to the door. True story. They got married. We married them at Pearl Palace. True story. Because she was persistent. Because she didn't lock into her ways. You know, we lock into our ways and we don't get out of our ways. We lock into it. We're so tight that if God from heaven would come down in visible form, we still reject it. Say, God, is that you? <laughs> is that you, God? Is, is that really you? We need to be free. And on an umbrella like this, where the Holy Spirit, it's the Holy Spirit's day, working on our behalf. We're celebrating Hallelujah. the birth of the church on this day. He wants to give us everything. He wants to deposit in us, hallelujah, a fresh start. You and I may have contributed to our delays. But this is the time and the season under this umbrella where we say, God, if I have contributed to my delays, forgive me. My Lord Jesus, if I didn't have eyes to see when you brought things to me, Lord, forgive me. If I became ignorant to what you were telling me, forgive me. Because as long as you remain in that state, the enemy is in the corner laughing. And you can't get free and you will not get free. My Lord Jesus, you're still tight. I hear the Spirit of God says, go after what you want. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go after what you want. You saw you missed your time to receive. Your, your time to receive came by and it passed you by. And you look at it and you say, whoa, I don't like that. But it's now time to reverse that. It's now time to let that go. Hallelujah. Bar Blind Bartimaeus, Mark 10. You know the story. Mark chapter 10. Reading from verse 46. And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, talking about Jesus, and a great number of people, blind by Timaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Now if it was some of us would say, Jesus, have mercy upon us. Oh, have mercy. He can't hear that. But the Bible says he cried out. Have you ever been in a situation where you, where you cried out to God? Sometimes it's in that place of crying out when Jesus will hear you. I used to say to God, God, what about me? What about me? When I used to be at work. And all those who couldn't conceive, and I would be praying for them. For them to conceive. And then weeks or months later, they said, guess what? I just went to the doctors and, 
and, and, and I'm pregnant. And I'll go home and I'll say, God, what about me? What about me? Me, you know me? Me. I've been in your house since I got saved that I never left your house. And I gave him all the reasons why he should come through for me. I still cried out. I cried out till he heard me. Oh, praise the Lord. David would cry out unto the Lord until God heard hear him. Hallelujah. Amen. You got to cry out. Read the Psalms very carefully. Hear my cry, O Lord. Attend unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth will I cry unto thee. How desperate do you need God? How desperate do you need him to come through for you? Amen. Oh, praise God. Oh, Pastor Fair. I'm not desperate. I'm not going to ball out my throat like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pastor Fair. Well, that's why you won't receive. <laughs> oh, Pastor Fair. How, how, how can I beg God like that? How can I do this? How can I do that? Oh, and, it, and it goes on. No. I was desperate. So desperate because when I looked at kids and I would go over, some of my best friends had children. And I would go touch them. One told me once who said, go get one of your own. I couldn't do it on my own. You know how that feels? And I know those of you who need spouses and it's difficult. So it would seem. But if you would cry out. Your victory is in the crying out. Hallelujah. You see, God wants to take you out of a state of, uh, 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 of being, be, being so low, being so timid, being so shy. God wants to take you out of your comfort zone. Because when you get out of your comfort zone, you'll be able to, hallelujah, to receive from God. And then as you go on and you progress in God, you'll be able to open your mouth and say, this is what he's done for me. Glory to God. Right now you and I can't, some, some can't even talk that way. Because you haven't learned to cry out yet. You haven't touched the hem of his garment. We're going to touch that right now. Luke 8, 43 to 48. All saints, you can recover all. You can recover all. I remember I was telling Pastor Paul this morning, I said, you know, I was thinking about my grandmother. And she had a way with words. She, when she would explain something to us as children, I know particularly me sometimes, and she's trying to explain certain things, and I couldn't get it. Mama, what are you talking about? She said, you're a little simpleton. <laughs> I just remembered that. She called me a simpleton. And I never quite understood what that all meant. You know, and uh, meaning that you really don't understand and it takes you quite some time to understand what I'm trying to say to you. But she'd always use that word and this, just yesterday I was, as I was looking in the mirror and her words came back to me, I said, you know, even though mama meant that I didn't quite understood what she said, I turned it around. I said, she said I was a simple tongue because I like simple things. I like simple things. I'm not a gaudy person. I like to be simple. That's the way God has me. But what I'm saying is, church, you need to get to that place where you're comfortable in God. You're so comfortable. That he'll give you the desires of your heart. After I got the victories, I asked God for anything and he gives it to me. My husband and I said, anything that we want, God gives it to us. Are you bragging and boasting? Yes. Been there. Hallelujah. But it's because we got to the state where we cried out to God many, many times. Many, many times. We've, he's heard our voice. And he said, I have no other choice but to bless you. Hallelujah. You got to do the same. What's 
the enemy tied up for you? What is it that you want to do? And you said it, it is so tight. Why not saying it's going to be loosed in Jesus' name? Amen. Why not change your confession? Why not say, God, you, you, you know, I know you're going to come through for me. Why not build up yourself in the most holy faith? Stop uh, speaking positive words. Hallelujah. Praise God. Instead of tying up yourself, you keep tying up yourself 24 by 7. It's not going to work out. Nothing will ever come of this. You're tying yourself up. And then you become like a yo-yo. It's not going to work out. Nothing is going to come of this. Hallelujah. God wants you to be free today. Luke chapter 8, verse 43 to 48. Let's read from, actually from verse 40. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him. For they were all waiting for him. Are you waiting for him? That's why you're not receiving because you, 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 you're yes too weak. Are you all waiting for him? Yes. And the people received him gladly. And it came to pass, verse 40, that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. You know, so I, I, I think we're more, we were more glad to receive the food downstairs. <laughs> Huh? That really recognizing that today is Pentecost. Because we have not all begun to give our all to him yet. And this is where he's waiting for you. For they were all waiting for him. We are waiting for Jesus right now. You just heard the testimony. He's coming. But while you're in the process of waiting, recover all. Amen. The little blessing that you just received not too long ago or where, whenever. There's more like that. Amen. There's more where that came from. Oh, glory to God. Jesus, if they could only see what you have in store. Oh, Lord. While you're waiting for him, position yourself to receive as much as you can. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Verse 43. And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment and immediately her issue of blood stanched stopped Jesus said who touched me when all denied Peter and they that were with him said master the multitude throng thee and press thee and sayest thou who touched me you mean there are so many people around Lord and so many people that you can feel that one touch. Yes, he can. He's Jesus. Oh, praise God. And Jesus said, somebody has touched me. For I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she, and when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him. The reason why she touched him, she gave Jesus the reason and how she was healed immediately. You can recover. Amen. Amen. But to recover, you must pursue. Amen. Oh, praise God. Oh, I've, I, I've been pursuing for 38 years, Pastor Faye, and nothing has happened. <laughs> uh, it's not long enough. Oh, I've been pursuing Pastor Faye for, for so long, and, and I don't see any results. You must get results. 
I can stand here as, as a witness that if you pursue God long enough with whatever, he will come through for you. Amen. Well, Pastor Faith, do I have to wait till to, the queen is now 95. Do I have to wait till 95 years old? If, you have, if you're desperate enough, you will wait. I was desperate as a God. I don't care. A hundred years old or not, you got to give me children. Amen. I didn't let up. I did not let, you don't let up. For I hear the Spirit of God said, for the best is yet to come. Amen. Hallelujah. It's when you, when you got the victory, you know you got the victory. And hallelujah, your victory didn't come easy. My God, your victory didn't come easy. You had to push. You had to go through some stuff. Uh, you had to climb some mountains and go down some valleys. Ah, praise God. You had to shed some tears. There's a lot you have to do. That builds stamina and spiritual stamina and strength within you that you can stand no matter what the outcome. Hallelujah. That your trust is not in man, but your trust is in God. Hallelujah. And the enemy can't tell you any different. When you're persistent, when you're standing firm, the enemy is losing his grip. Amen. Hallelujah. But it's in the times when you let, when you, when you, when you're saying, no, it's not going to happen. Satan is tightening his grip. And it gets tighter. And it gets tighter and tighter. Saints, hallelujah. You can recover. That's a fair when you said you can recover, meaning that you can return to your normal state. Amen. Is it a health issue? Like the woman with the issue of blood, you can return to your normal state. I'm sure she, for 38 years, she had a, a, a health issue. But prior to, be, prior to 38 years, she was healthy. You can recover. God wants you, you and I to recover and recover all. Hallelujah. Is it an issue in your mind? You can recover. Hallelujah. God wants you delivered. God wants you to be set free, saints. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give God thanks today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In, in uh, Exodus, cha Exodus chapter 15, verse 9. You know the enemy speaks too, right? Mm -hmm. Exodus 15, verse 9. Look what the enemy said. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My lust shall be satisfied upon them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall, de shall destroy them. This is what the enemy is saying. Mm -hmm. yeah. Satan is saying these words. And you, are, you and I are allowing him to say those words or do those things to us. I will pursue. Hmm? I will overtake. Pursue who? I will pursue the saints. I will overtake the saints. And when I overtake them, I'll take away all that they have. I'll ruin them. That's what he's doing. I will, I will take away their, their possessions, their spoil. My lust shall be satisfied upon them. I will draw my sword. My hand shall destroy them. But David knew different. He turned it around. God spoke. He inquired of the Lord. God spoke and he said, no, this is what you do. You pursue him. Amen. And you will recover. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Take this word as a no saying, you're not going to be taken from me anymore. Amen. I don't care how long it's, it's taken. When the song says, I got my mind made up, and I won't turn back. It's, it's not just meaning turn, turning away from salvation, I won't turn back from salvation. No, it's a, I got my mind made up, I won't turn back from the word of God. I won't turn back.
back from the what he's told me in his word. All the promises of God belongs to you and I. Amen. Praise God. And I'm not turning back. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God. Joshua chapter 10, verse 19. Look what God tells Joshua. Joshua 10 verse 19 says, Let's go verse 18. And Joshua said, Roll great stones upon the mouth of the cave and set men by it for to keep them. And stay ye not, but, Joshua's giving the command, but pursue after your what? Pursue after your enemies and smite the hindmost of them. Pursue after your enemies. Pursue after the enemy that's withholding your stuff. Yeah. Kill them. Amen. Says and smite the hindmost of them. Like kill them. Suffer them not to enter into their cities. For the Lord your God hath delivered them into your hand. Oh, praise the Lord. I love that verse. Oh, praise God. Pursue after your enemies, devil. I'm coming after you. I'm putting you on notice. This is my stuff. And I've come to get it. Hallelujah. And I'm not letting go until I receive what I need to receive. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, gosh. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Pursue, saints. Pursue. Pursue. Psalms 34 and 14. Psalms 34 and verse 14. Reads. Depart from evil, it's an instruction. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Even in peace, you, 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 you want peace? You gotta pursue it. You gotta pursue it. Your mind is, is in turmoil. Ask God, Lord, fill my mind with peace. Begin to speak in your heavenly language. Peace will come. And you pursue it, meaning that you don't stop. You don't stop. You keep pursuing it. Hallelujah. You keep speaking in your heavenly language. You keep speaking, speaking, speaking until the peace comes. I can't go to sleep at night. That doesn't bother me. Thank God. I really not want to sleep at night. Just put my head on the pillow. I'm gone. Pastor Pose, you're out like a bulb. I'm gone. I mean, he, he, he too. But thank God we got peace. We got peace. Amen. When you put your head on your pillow and some don't have peace. And, and if there was an occasion that I don't, I can't sleep, don't bother me. I open my mouth, by the time I get to her, I'm gone. <laughs> hmm? Or the first shamba, I'm gone. Hallelujah. Wake up, wake up the next morning. I forgot that I, 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 I had a little issue with sleeping. Praise God. Get filled up with the Holy Ghost. And he'll help you. And some people say, Pastor Faye, I can't sleep. Well, open your mouth and speak. I know it's difficult. You, you want to sleep, you can't. Well, I can't read my Bible either. Can't sleep, can't read. Then lay on your bed, lie on your bed, and open your mouth and speak in your heavenly language. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Peace comes. Pursue peace. Joy comes. It's at those times when God gives you a vision. 
or will give you a vision or a dream so sweet praise God hallelujah <laughs> all saints you got it good and you don't know you got it good you just don't know how to apply it well here the spirit of God is saying right now apply it praise God hallelujah and last one Hosea chapter 8 verse 3 Hosea chapter 8 verse 3. Praise God. Someone read it for me please. I got this new Bible and it just sticks. Hosea chapter 8 verse 3. Israel has rejected the good. The enemy will pursue him. So when you, when you reject the good, the other translation says, Israel has cast off the thing that is good. Israel has cast off the things that is good. When you begin to doubt what God's word says. When God tells you to do something and your, your flesh gets in the way and you say, no, that can't be God. When God has spoken and, 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 and you know the thing is right, but somehow the enemy masquerades before you and, and, and you, you pull back, fear grips you. Then the enemy will overtake you. When you say today, yes, Lord, I am, I am going to do exactly what you've told me to do tomorrow. And tomorrow comes and you say, I don't think that was God. <laughs> I, I don't think so. Let me, you know, we have something in the kingdom. Let me rethink this. In God, there's no rethinking. <laughs> es Esther. She said, if I perish, I perish. I'm not going to rethink this. Mordecai spoke once. Think of it this way, Sister Esther. It could be possible that you come into the kingdom for such a time as this. That was the word of the Lord issuing out of Mordecai's mouth. And she listened very carefully, very intently to what the word of the Lord was saying. And she said, well, you know what? I'm not even going to rethink. I hear what is coming to me. And you know what? I'm, I'm going to pursue. Praise God. Because if I don't pursue it, it will appear that myself and my, my entire nation will perish. That's what Mordecai actually alluded to her and told her. Think not that you're coming to the kingdom for such a time. That if you don't do it, don't think that you, you, we're all going to perish and you're going to escape. No. And she said, you know what? If I perish, I perish. That's the tenacity we should have. I'm going to pursue it. My sister says, no, but God says yes. My brother says, no, but God says yes. My Lord Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. The bank says no, but God says yes. Because mm. you, you got that vision inside of you. You, you. you know it. It's there. But somehow you can't get it out. You can't get it out. Pursue it. Under this anointing, under this umbrella of Pentecost 2022, pursue it and you'll become victorious. Amen. Hallelujah. Say to yourself, I'm not going to be discouraged anymore. God is delighted when we pursue. Brings him great honor, brings him great joy when we pursue saints. Hallelujah. You say, Pastor Faye, how, to, how do I reclaim what the devil has stolen from me? 
Hallelujah. How, how do I recover it? You, 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 you've been targeted. Know this. You've been targeted. Satan has targeted you. To steal from you. That's why you're not able to receive what you need. You've been targeted. What the Bible says in John 10.10. 10, the, the enemy comes to steal. Steal. Kill. Destroy. Everything that belongs. Everything that belongs to you. He wants to destroy it. He'll send people along your way to destroy your blessings. Hmm? Been there? He'll send people along your way to talk you out of your blessings. He'll use family members in your household to hinder you. But what we are called to resist him. And we are called to use our authority and stand our ground and say, if anybody's moving, it's not me. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Why do you want to remove, move away from the thing that's inside of you that you haven't given birth to it yet? And you know God's put it inside of you. He wants to bless you. He wants to increase you. Why do you want to move away from it without even giving it birth? Or giving birth to it. It's not God's will for you to remain single. Hallelujah. That's the word. Don't remove yourself from it. Stand your ground. Hallelujah. No, you've been targeted. When Christians, I find when Christians suffer loss. Many Christians tend to retreat. Don't retreat. I find that they're going to flight mode. They run. Instead of going into fight mode. Because we're too wrapped up in our circumstances. Our circumstances have wrapped us up. You we're not prepared for battle. Saints, one minister put it this way. He says, you can't defeat a 24 by 7 devil by being a part-time Christian. <laughs> I know our God is a God of restoration. And I know that God's will for you and I is to recover. And I know that it pleases the Father well when he sees you recovering. Praise God. It pleases him. He's pleased. So how to reclaim what the devil has stolen, remember, first thing, you have been targeted. Hallelujah, you're a target. What do I do? Encourage yourself in the Lord. How do I do that? Encourage yourself with the word of God, that's what David did. Encourage yourself, it's twofold. Encourage yourself with the word of God. Keep going with the word of God until you win. I heard my sister saying that uh, Lord told her to get more into the word of God. Just dive in. Start. Most of us, I don't know what we call it, but I don't swim. So we're just floating on top of the word we haven't really dove in we need to dive in everything in and remind yourself what it's all about what he has told you remind yourself of the dominion that God has given you hallelujah and, and, and remind yourself of the promises that he's given you Praise God. Is it possible to spend time in the word of God? Yes. 
Encourage yourself in the Lord, saints. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I see Brother Jonas and, and others. Sometimes I come in and by themselves they're here encouraging themselves in the Lord. I remember many, many years ago it wasn't this building. We're up on Gardner's Road in our own building there and when, it was, when I was going through difficult times after church, and, and you know, saints, I, I was the only congregant. <laughs> Test time. I was the only congregant. And uh, I, I always said when, when Pastor Paul would say, he would preach and he'd, he'd point the finger and he'd point, I was the only person and he pointed right at me. <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> That was very bad. And then right after he'd point the finger, he'd say, well, now we'll take up the offering. I'm looking around and I said, who's going to take up that offering? <laughs> you must remember, I wasn't, I wasn't a minister back then. I was still in the flesh. And I would say, I am taking up offering. You're going to go down and pick up your own offering because I'm not giving you any money. <laughs> But I needed something from God. I really did. I needed something from God. He had something for me that I wanted. Has God, does God have something for you that you want? Oh, Jesus. I hear him say, he's got things for you that you want. And after church, in those days, I, I think my husband would would preach longer than he's preaching now. <laughs> Just to keep me submissive. <laughs> and to teach me some stuff because he'd preach from early morning to late evening. And I alone would sit there. I got stories to tell you. I would sit there and I would listen and I would listen and I would listen. One minister told us, said when, I, when God first called me, he said I would, he would put me in the bushes and I would have all those pop bottles. And he said God would have me preach to the pop bottles, the, the pop cans. And he said I would lay hands on them. In the name of the pop, pop cans would fall over. And that's how he got his practice. It took time, took time, took time. But I remembered... When I got it in the word, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door shall be open. Hallelujah. And if you're asking, you receive. I said, well, Lord, I stayed in that little church by myself. Sometimes I tell, no, you go home. And I, I would read, delight thyself in the Lord, and he would bring it to pass. Oh, glory to God. I, 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 was, getting a, I, I was getting taught in the word of God how, how to appropriate the word, how to, how to go about and receive things. And when I saw that, I said, God, if I praise you and glorify you, if I worship you, just spend time out of my busy schedule, and do these things, you'll, 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 you'll do this for me, you'll give me what I want, because it's wrapped up. Hallelujah. What you did for Abraham, you will do for me. It's wrapped up. It's there. And I said to God, God, then I will do it. I will stay in church after he, he closes, and I said, you go home. I'll delight myself in the Lord. Watch me jumping up and down and praising God all by myself. Just worshiping him, just praising, not feeling anything, but just doing it. I'm I said, God, I'm delighting myself in you. I'm delighting myself in you. I'm spending time. I'm praising you, God. I'm praising you. I'm doing everything that the Bible says. Would you believe my God came through? Amen. Hallelujah. Because I spent time. I spent time. I delighted myself in him. What is it going to take for you to delight yourself in him for him to bring it to pass? You've got to find that niche. You've got to find what's easier for you.
For you and I are not the same. What is it going to take? Then over years, I, 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 I start to recognize that this thing is good. I, I, I once, once I said to God, I said, God, you, you know, I, I want to read the word more. I want to delight myself in you. So I said, okay, God, you got my, 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 my presence. You got my, my, my gifts. You got the things that I desire wrapped up. I know they're wrapped up according to the Bible. He, good, he gives good gifts to them. Hmm? So God, take me deeper in you. I said, I read the word. I said, I make it my breakfast, lunch, and dinner. My supper. And I began church at one verse. One verse. I said, God, I make it a practice. I read one, one, one verse a day. And I'll start with the from Genesis to Revelation, I'll read it through. One verse a day, I began to do that. Praise God. Got sweeter and sweeter. July would come of a particular year and particular years. And I'll be finishing, finish reading from Genesis to Revelation. I said, God, I like that. Ha! Huh? My tongues began to change. What I couldn't change on my own, God has been doing it. And I'm alarmed at myself at times for what God is doing. So I, I, I move from one verse to two verses. Then I move from two verses to four verses. And before I roll out of bed, it's my breakfast. Hallelujah. It's my supper. It's everything. And the things began to change. I said, God, to this day, I've, I've gone through it 15 times. I said, God. I look at myself and say, Faye girl, is that you? Is that you who used to be afraid of even talking in front of people? We had to go take a course once, Pastor Paul and myself. Because he was shy and I was shy. We got two shy people living together. <laughs> He's to, supposed to do it and he'll push me. He always pushing me. And I'm supposed to do it. And I'm pushing him. Both pushing each other. And we're trying to push jump out, but he won't let us. He, he's, he's a tough one. Some, someone said to us not too long ago, he said, well, are you surprised? He's your child. I had to shut my mouth. Couldn't say anything. But, but it works. What you put into it is what you get out of it. Amen? Amen. What you put into it, you get out of it. So encourage yourself in the Lord. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Hallelujah. How to reclaim what the enemy has stolen from you. Encourage yourself in the Lord. And then you pursue. That's all. And he answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. Praise God. Hallelujah. Pursue. Doesn't take long. Doesn't take long. Hallelujah. Took me three, mo three months to get a husband but that I didn't want. But because I'm both plugged in, God gave me what I thought I didn't want. He knew that I needed. He will give you the desires of your heart. And when you finish, hallelujah, you overtake. You overtake. Who's, who's victorious? You. By the time you get to overtaking, you got the victory. You keep believing God and you keep speaking the same thing. Over and over and over. In Jesus' name, I will receive what I need to receive. And I rebuke you, enemy, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Stay out. 
That's why before I go to bed at night, I say, Satan, if I catch you, I'll kill you. I say, you're dead already, but nevertheless, I'll kill you again. Mm -hmm. And I keep going on and on. I, I stop him. I stop him. None of this, I can't sleep. I can't, I'm tormented. No. We are children of God. Let us stand. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let us stand. Hallelujah. It's time to pursue, overtake, and recover all. Amen. Amen. It's time to pursue, overtake, and recover all while we are waiting for God. Yes. Bible says the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the humble with victory. Hallelujah. So let us be faithful. And overtake, hallelujah, and not give up. Praise God. Let's pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you for your people. Those online, those that have participated, those that are here right now, Lord God. I thank you that you are still God. You're still on the throne. Hallelujah. hallelujah. You're still on the throne. And when we, when we come to meet you, Lord, you, Father, you'll still be on the throne. Yeah. Glory to God. I pray, Father, as you're on the throne, you're working on our behalf. Hallelujah. Our high priest, with his, which is Jesus, is yeah. making intercessions for us even now. Yeah. And our precious Holy Spirit, who is our comforter and our strength, is guiding us and directing yeah. us and leading us. I pray the name of Jesus. Christ as this word has gone forth oh God hallelujah that it will bring forth a great harvest Amen. it will bring forth a great harvest Amen. I pray Lord that miracles and signs and wonders will come from your people in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ I pray that they lack nothing no sickness no diseases Amen. will come upon them in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ while we wait yes. we're under your umbrella of protection yes. while we wait we're believing you for the promises to be made manifest in all of our lives. We give you all the praises and the glory. We give you all the honor. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and bless you, bless you, bless you. Bless you seven blessings upon your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This day prosper. From this day prosper. From this day prosper. 